Hi everyone, my name is Norman, I run the blog NimbleNeedles.com and today I want to show you how to knit a headband. But not just any headband, a seamless headband that is reversible and has a lovely fair aisle section in between you can't see on the inside. This is a free pattern and I will show you how to knit this headband from beginning to the very end and you will be able to follow all my steps. I'm going to show you all the techniques and everything you need to know to finish this lovely reversible headband. So let's dive right into it. So let's talk about the materials you will need for this headband. First of all, head over to my blog and download the full pattern. I'll guide you through all the most important steps in this video, but there are tons of additional information in the pattern and I'm sure you'll find it extremely helpful. Plus it's for free. You'll find the link in the description below. You will also find the links to all the other materials in the description. I'm using two skeins of cashmere yarn for needle size 3 mm here. That's 50 grams in total, but you can pick any kind of slightly fussy yarn as well as long as it's the same yarn weight. Then you need scissors and a tapestry needle for finishing up and then needle size 2.5 millimeters, 3 millimeters and 3.5 millimeters. We will be knitting different sections of this headband on different needles. It doesn't matter if you're using double pointed needles or circulars, just pick whatever you like most. I just happen to love these carbons needles and that's why I'm using it, them. Um, make sure to watch my review, I'll link it to you up in here. And then you also need a crochet hook for the provisional cast on. And then we are ready to start. First you need to cast on 132 stitches with a provisional cast on. At least for size S using the same yarn as I do. The pattern will give you detailed information on how to adjust this headband to your size. For men I, in a size M I'd probably go for 138 stitches. I crochet a simple chain stitch around my needles using a smooth uh, cotton yarn or some superwash uh, yarn. Um, I wouldn't use the actual cashmere yarn or whatever fuzzy yarn you pick because then you will have big troubles unraveling the provisional cast on later on. Um, and of course you can pick any provisional cast on method you like. I just happen to love uh, the crochet provisional cast on because it makes it so much easier to actually uh, count the stitches and that's something I'm having tremendous troubles. Um, so that's why I pick the crochet cast on. It's easy to count and you can easily add further stitches. And once you cast on all stitches, pick up the color you want to have on the outside of the headband and we'll knit one round. And here's one more thing. I usually already join the provisional cast on in the round by slipping a couple of stitches from the last to the first needle. That way the gap isn't somewhere in the isn't between two needles but somewhere in the middle and I think this gives you a much neater finish. And then once you are set, knit one round across your provisional cast on. So one round of pure knit stitches. And go slowly so you don't miss any cast on stitches. This can be a bit fiddly and um, knit across all those uh, stitches. So once you finish knitting one round in the rust color it's time to join in the cream color. You can cut the rust color leaving a tail of say uh, five six inches for weaving in later and then knit across in the cream color one more round. So one round of knit stitches tuck on the tail so the first stitches uh, don't get too loose 
and we'll be weaving in the tails on the inside later on. So knit across one round. So once you finish knitting one round in the print color, it's time to start with the ribbing. From here it's 34 rows in a one by one rib stitch. So that's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And I really recommend you to knit this first round as slowly and diligently as possible and frequently check if you really alternated knit and purl stitches. What really helps me getting the repeat right is counting. So I go one, two, one, two, or you could go knit, Pearl. And I actually say it out loud because if you don't, then your mind will probably start to wonder um, after a couple of stitches and then your, well, I at least will um, mess things up. You need to knit 34 rows in the one by one rib stitch. And just in case, if all of this is a bit too fast for you, like how to do the provisional cast on, how to knit and purl and how to join colors and whatever, you'll find detailed step-by-step -step tutorials for all of the most important techniques here on my channel. So if you need to catch up, uh, kindly watch these first. And once you've finished knitting those 34 rows in the one by one rib stitch, you have to join in the new color and knit one row. So one row of knit stitches. Um, I think it's best to cut uh, the yarn here. This will leave one more tail for weaving in, but you can weave it all on the inside of the headband. Um, you can carry the tail across the next uh, eight, nine rows until you start with the fair owl section. But because you fold the headband, I don't think it's the best idea. So um, I'd cut the yarn and join it in again later on. And once you knit one round with knit stitches, you need to purl one round. And I personally would start the round by slipping one stitch and moving um, the start of your round one uh, stitch ahead. That way these purl stitches, well, you won't get that large of a job. And this is important because uh, these purl stitches here, they will form uh, the fold line for uh, the headband. So slip that first stitch and then purl one round. So once you've finished purling that one row, you have to pick up your three millimeter needles and continue knitting in stockinette stitch. If you slip that first stitch, make sure to purl it uh, so um, you get a good fold line. And then continue in stockinette stitch and we need 11 rows of stockinette stitch before the fair aisle section starts. And now you might wonder why are we changing needles here? Well, it's quite easy. The ribbing is quite a bit more uh, stretchy than the stockinette stitch. Also, you want the outer layer of the headband to be uh, slightly bigger than the inner layer. So the ribbing helps uh, with the fit so your headband isn't constantly slipping down. And, um, but you want the outer layer to be slightly bigger so the fair aisle section doesn't get uh, stretched too much because that won't look really pretty. Before I go on, I quickly want to remind you to give my video a big thumbs up. Shooting these videos takes a lot of time and effort and a little like or a nice comment is a very easy way to support my work. Now I finished 11 rows in a plain stockinette stitch and now it's time to start with the fair aisle section. Before you start knitting it, 
switch to the 3.5 millimeter needles. You need to do this because Fair Isle has all these floats on the backside and it's not as stretchy as plain stocking it's stitched. Uh, but you wanna, you know, maintain the same give across your the whole headband. So that's why you need to switch uh, one needle to one needle size bigger. Now the pattern comes with two suggestions for the fair aisle sections but really you can get creative yourself. If you well don't know where to go yet I can really recommend this book. It's 200 fair aisle motives by Mary Jane Mucklestone. I'll uh, provide you a link in the description below and it's loaded with tons of um, suggestions and how to knit it. So if you want to modify my pattern this is a good book to start so so I'm going to uh, change my uh, needles now if you're knitting with fixed circulars or whatever then you just start knitting the round with the new needles Oh, and one more thing. Well, some of you might wonder, well, why are, am I knitting the ribbing with double pointed needles and um, the fair aisle section on a circulars using the um, magic loop method? The thing about fair aisle is I really don't, I mean, it's the traditional way to do uh, knit it, but actually I don't like knitting fair aisle on double pointed needles because um, you have uh, four instead of two gaps and it's uh, so easy to mess up the floats w w uh, around the gaps. So that's why I prefer um, Fair Isle on circulars. You just have uh, longer stretches um, where you can really manage your floats and maintain the same length. So that's why I actually prefer um, Magic Loop for uh, the Fair Isle section. So I already joined in the cream color and now I'm knitting uh, the Fair Isle section uh, with the 3.5 millimeter needles. As you can see, I'm using a ring to hold my yarns. I prefer that method, but if you rather knit with two hands or whatever other Fair Isle technique you prefer, then this is of course fine as well. So I don't have a dedicated Fair Isle tutorial on my YouTube channel yet, so I thought I'd use this opportunity to give you some important uh, pointers. I think the most important um, thing you need to observe is that you stretch out your stitches on your right needle like this. A lot of knitters tend to bunch the stitches up like this, but if you do this when knitting Fair Isle, those floats here on the backside will be too short. So always stretch things out out as you knit so um, the floats end up the right size and what you can also do once you knit a couple of stitches you can sort of yank it give it a nice yank after knitting a couple of stitches so you really stretch out the floats to a length um, of um, the give or ease of the plain stocking knit stitch and I think the second tip I the second important tip is Take things slowly. Knit these fair aisle sections carefully. Check your charts. Check your knitting frequently. And if you, I mean, it's so easy to miss a stitch, and one missed stitch might mess up the repeat for the whole round, and you might end up with a lot of reverse knitting. So knit slowly. Also, if you if you speed things up, uh, it's so much easier to mess up the floats and one round with um, two short floats is enough to spoil uh, the stretchiness of the whole headband and you really don't want that. And here's one last tip if you would like to get creative yourself. If you look carefully at my two uh, pattern suggestions for this headband then you will see that um, the longest floats you will uh, create on the back side are they bridge three stitches. And the reason behind that is, I mean in stranded uh, knitting you sometimes bridge uh, six or eight or I don't know, sometimes even 12 stitches. 
for a headband this really is not a good idea first of all the floats are not as stretchy as the rest of the knitting and also the headband by nature you stretch it quite a lot every time you put it on you stretch it and this runs the risk even in such a fuzzy yarn that you mess up the you know the single stitches that might be anchored with a really really long float on the back side so try to when you design something or you pick a design pick something that has manageable floats otherwise uh, I'm not sure it's the best for a headband. Now I finished the Fair Isle section and uh, you should be able to invert the ribbing and um, try the headband on. Um, you really should do this because as I said it's easy to mess up the tension for the Fair Isle section and if you do your headband might end up a bit too tight. So try it on and see if um, or make sure that you didn't mess up the floats on the back side. If you did well um, then you have to drop this section and do it again. And from here we um, need to switch back to the uh, three millimeter needles and um, as you can see um, this section was knit on the 3.5 millimeter needles but it's exactly as wide as the rest it's not you know bulging out or anything and that's why we did it we want to man maintain the same give across the whole headband and have a nice little grip on the inside and that's what we did here so once you finish knitting the fair section you need to switch back to the three millimeter needles um, so either join in new double pointed needles or if you're knitting with interchangeable knitting needles like i do you can simply exchange the tips um, but it really doesn't matter so from here we will be knitting 10 more rounds in plain stock and it's stitch 10 more rounds of knit stitches and in case you were are wondering we are knitting 10 rounds because this is 11 rounds but we will be casting off and casting off adds one more round so you want this to be symmetrical so it's only 10 rounds towards the top it's one week later and i finally found the time to finish those last 10 rows in stockinette stitch um, i had to take a break um, because i had a close-up encounter with the sharp edges of a sushi box and well that prevented me from knitting but still i didn't want to stop this video here um, because well i mean it doesn't have to be a cut uh, that prevents you from knitting life happens and when you're in pain or whatever busy with other stuff stuff well you can stop so the headband is almost finished now we only need to bind off before we can do that we need to weave in some tails because uh, we don't want uh, that to be uh, visible on the outside we're going to do it on the inside so let's weave in some tails i already uh, thread my uh, little tail on a tapestry needle i am using sharp tapestry needles because i find it much easier to weave in the tails and i'm going to show you how i do it there are many other w ways to weave in tails but that's how i do it for rib sections well i always hide the tails in the corresponding panel so i'm hiding the cream colored or yarn here in this section and i'm going i will be hiding um, the rust color in the rust section and for ribbing i always um, go in well i i pick one rib and then i see i go through and maybe you can see why i prefer uh sharp tapestry needles oops i skipped one stitch here because it's much easier and faster to spare uh, through the individual ribs and then i just pull it through and um, 
you can go once in the other direction as well. I'm going to, to do this here, but uh, with uh, Kashmir, Kashmir has quite the high friction, so I'm not even sure that is entirely needed. There's just one thing I want to show you before I cut the tail. So I go into the other direction. And when you do so, it's very, very important when you go in the other direction is that you don't pull uh, the tail too tight because if you would be doing that, um, you would singe the fabric here and that's not what you want. Just uh, pull on gently, then uh, stretch it out a bit and then you can uh, take your uh, scissors and cut uh, the tail. This will be hidden on the inside anyway, so um, it's not going to be visible, but um, well, that isn't an excuse to not um, uh, weave in the tails neatly. And there's something else I want to show you. As you can see, there is a little ladder here. Um, I did it in magic loop and sometimes this happens, but that's nothing to despair. You can fix it. So here's the ladder. And what you have to do is you have to pick the loops next to the ladder and pull out a bit um, of yarn. See what I'm doing? So I'm going all the way down and then this stitch is going this way. So I pulled here and then it's going up here. So uh, the next thing you want to do is you, you go uh, through that row of stitches and then you pull on these loops as well. And if you do this on both sides, the ladder will vanish. So I'm going to do it on the other side as well. And I'm done. And then, um, as you can see, the ladder vanished. And if you notice it, uh, there's still time to fix it, but you need to do it now because it's a bit diffi more difficult uh, from the other side. And I quickly want to show you how I um, hide the rest yarn as well. So um, this is purl stitches and for uh, purl stitches, I uh, always, or reverse stock in it, however you want to call it, uh, I always go diagonally. So I'm, but again, I'm sparing through uh, the little uh, pearl bumps like this. And then I uh, pull through. And for weaving in the tails in the fair section, I actually go below the floats. This is a bit more tricky, but I don't want to inhibit the movement around the floats. So that's why I go below. Um, try uh, to pay attention so you don't end up on the right side. And then I, again, I uh, pull through and, and then I cut the yarn. So I finished weaving in all tails we created so far and I also fixed the minor uh, lettering that occurred here on the edges. And now it's time to bind off. So what you have to do is you have to invert the hem like this. And now you have to pick up all the stitches from your provisional cast on. This is cashmere and needle size 2.5. So I'm not really sure uh, how well you will be able to see this, but there's always a purl stitch and a knit stitch and you have to pick up uh, so it's kind of hard to see it's hidden here there is the stitch and you need to pick it up one at a time and go through all the stitches here and this is going to take some time so i'm going to leave you uh, concentrating on picking up all the stitches. Now, cashmere is, or any kind of fuzzy yarn, is a nightmare to pick up. So I actually recommend you to uh, unravel the provisional cast on the crochet ed edge one at a time and pick up uh, the stitches as you go. Uh, this will take forever, 
I know and uh, sometimes you might use your scissors uh, to uh, cut the yarn loose but uh, be patient now once you picked up all stitches things should look like this and now you have two uh, choices either you knit a three needle bind off straight away if you're comfortable or you transfer the stitches to one needle first before you bind off and that's actually what I prefer so um, that's how I'm transferring stitches um, to uh, one needle so I always pick one from the inner needle and one from the outer needle and transfer them to a separate needle so it's a bit easier to bind off so I slipped all stitches to my circular needle here and things are starting to look like a proper headband now and the last step you need to do is you need to knit a three needle bind off. Like I said if you're familiar and comfortable with a three needle bind off there is no need to transfer uh, the stitches to uh, to one needle but I find it makes things so much easier. Also you can untwist any stitches you might have twisted while uh, picking them up from the provisional cast on. So let's bind off. Uh, if you transferred all stitches to one set of needle you just need to knit two together and then bind off. So it's always knit two together, two stitches and then bind off. So you would knit two together then knit two together again and then bind off the normal way. But um, this fold line here is a ridge of purl stitches so I actually recommend you to uh, purl all uh, stitches together and this is the important bit. If you knit two together the two stitches you knit two together should lead with one stitch um, from uh, the inner layer and if you purl two together you should uh, lead with uh, a stitch from the outer layer and I'm going to purl all stitches um, so I'm slipping one stitch here uh, back to my cable uh, like this and now I'm going to purl two together two stitches like so purl two uh -huh. So it's always purl two together and then bind off loosely. So try to elongate these loops so you're not losing all stretchiness in your headband. And then, uh, and then purl two together another two stitches and bind off until the end of the row and you bound off all stitches and then you will have finished your headband. So I finished binding off all stitches and this is how our little headband looks like. Now the bottom will be a bit rounder than the top so this is something that will fix or will be fixed after blocking and since this is cashmere you absolutely need to you need to wash it anyway so um, once you blocked it this will even out. So the last thing that needs to be done is weaving in the last tail so go in underneath um, the V of this knit stitch here or and then go underneath this stitch here and then um, this little edge will be invisible as well. And then try to weave in the tail on the inside. So this is uh, the unblocked headband and um, this is how it will look like once you blocked it and then it will be all neat and flat. Anyway, I really really hope you enjoyed this video and knitting along with me, please Give me a big thumbs up if you like this video, comment with your feedback and your questions and of course consider subscribing to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day!